The number one challenge I often hear from trainees is that they have a difficult time finding a supervisory appraiser to mentor them. This could be discouraging as no one would want to spend countless hours and money in completing the coursework, then unable to find a job opportunity. To find a supervisory appraiser, there are a few things you need to understand. That includes what are the causes of their hesitation to mentor a trainee, how can you be useful to their appraisal team, and what are the ways in locating the potential supervisors. Here are 10 useful tips in finding a supervisory appraiser. Tip number 1, become a value-added team member. Put yourself into the supervisor's shoes. Instead of emphasizing on your needs or expectation on a supervisor who can get you into a certain niche market. Ask yourself, what are the benefits to take on you as their trainee? Focus on bringing value to the team and not as a burden. Make sure you have some basic understanding of the appraisal process to get started. Tip number 2, handle the budget problem. Being a supervisory appraiser requires their time, energy or even money. A fixed salary to a trainee isn't affordable to many fee-only residential appraisers with a small practice. One way to work around it is to do a fee split for each assignment. In this setup, they do not need to take on the burden of paying you a fixed salary. In some states, a mentor would need to accompany the trainee for the first certain number of appraisals. Therefore, some supervisors do not find it justifiable to do a fee split in the beginning phase of the training. What you could offer to the mentor is to work for free in the first few appraisals assignments. Once you demonstrate your value to the company and gain the knowledge to handle tasks on your own, then you could do a fee split afterward. Tip number 3, reassurance to collaborate and non-compete. To make their mentoring effort worthwhile, there could be a clause such that you would work for their firm for at least two years. Sometimes, having a non-compete agreement might make sense. For example, you cannot contact their clients after you terminate the working relationship, or you are not allowed to perform appraisal practice in their service region for a minimum of one year after the training. Every state has their own employment laws. You should consult with an employment or legal advisor first. Tip number 4, become the exit plan for about to retired appraiser. If you contact appraisers who are planning to retire in a few years, the chances are they could be more open to providing training to you. After all, whether you will become their competitor would be less of a concern, since they would not be in the business soon. And very likely you could be the succession of their appraisal business. Tip number 5, connect with other appraisers. You could join the Appraisers Coalition and the Appraisal Institute in your area and get to know other appraisers. Social media could be another effective but more subtle to build your network of appraisers. There is also a list of networking groups on our website that could be helpful in growing your appraisal business. I'll leave a link in the description box. Tip number 6, network with other real estate professionals. Realtors, mortgage agents and loan officers could all be a great source in referring you to appraisers since they do deal with them on a daily basis. Talk to your family or friends if they know of any local real estate professionals that you could talk to. Tip number 7, look into government job opening. When I was researching on the appraisal jobs available, I did see there were many jobs openings in the assessor's office of many local cities or counties. After all, a family might not buy or sell or refinance their property all the time. But the government does need to assess the value of your real estate every once in a while. So that they can calculate the amount of property tax you need to pay. Tip number 8, look into the commercial industry. The projects that a commercial appraiser handles tend to be on a bigger scale and more complex when compared to residential real estates. Therefore, you really could become helpful in managing some of their legwork. Also, the payout for evaluating the commercial real estates could be more lucrative. So that they might be able to compensate you better even when you're just working as a trainee. Tip number 9, carefully follow instruction on the apply method. This is a crucial step where many trainee applicants neglect. A supervisory appraiser once told me that he received too many trainee inquiries. To reduce his workload, he would filter out all the emails without the secret word in the email subject line he requested in the job posting. If you cannot follow a simple instruction at the time you're applying, then how can you give confidence to your mentor that you'll do so when you start working for him? Tip number 10, be creative when applying. So what makes you stand out? Rather than sending a blunt and boring resume. How about including a professional photo? What about recording a short clip to introduce yourself to the supervisor? 
Not only this could leave a memorable impression to the mentors, but it also tells them that you are willing to take the extra step in doing a good job. So do you like this video? If so, please subscribe to our channel. I will also leave a link of the full article in the description box below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.